Yeah. I've never seen one of those before. So the yeah, the gimbal is electrical. Yeah. Uh, it helps with, it, I use right. it for recording. Yep. Yeah. So that way it, it stays stable so when I'm, like, yes. Cool. <laughs> so I'm not going to get everybody seasick on the, yeah. on the channel. That uh, it's about 110. Oh, that's not that no. So I'm. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Windy City Thetan Watch. Here we're at the Ogilvy Station. I just came in from the Northwest suburbs. I was out there. We uh, enjoyed some St. Patrick's Day parade stuff. Loved it. Uh, so the in Norwood Park, um, it's a very family-oriented parade. Great. You see the all kinds of kids and all kinds of high schools. Um, you know the the, the local businesses. Um, it's just fun time. Appreciate that. And uh, so we're further away than I usually start, um, but since it's from a pretty mass um, transportation center, I feel comfortable walking in from here. Uh, we're at the, we got off at Ogilvy Station, and as you look out this window, you may or may not be able to see it. I'm, I'm sorry that I can't really focus and change the zoom effect on this camera, but you can see we're just north of the Union Station. So the Ogilvy Station is typically um, northern and western uh, trains that come into the city. There's about eight lines that service. You've got uh, Union Pacific. There's three Union Pacifics. There's a Northwest. There's a BNSF. There's several trains that service Chicago as commuter rails. Um, and then you've got Union Station, which is, you know, I always say that you, you could walk several blocks in protected zone between Ogilvy and Union Station. So as I walk out here, all I have to do is cross the street and I'll go into the Union Station and I can go into the subterranean so that I can stay uh, at least protected from wind or snow or rain if it was there. Um, and walk out to the Union Station. And then at Union Station, you're basically at Jackson, which is two blocks, three blocks north of um, the Scientology um, building. Here you go, sir. Oops. Uh, Sorry. The building actually closed. No, it's, it's, it's open. So CVS is open? Uh, I don't know if CVS is. I don't know if they are. Um, so we'll cross the street here. You'll see a, a subterranean look of Union Station. Um, I'm big fans of a channel called Nate and Kara, and they're kind of just world travelers. I think they did van life for a while, and now they're they're more just um, international travel vloggers. And uh, they this week they published the first part of a two-part trip where they go uh, west across the U.S. on trains and then they come east across Canada on trains. And their western leg was uh, from, I, I, sorry, I can't remember if they started in New York or if they started in D.C., uh, but they, uh, they took the lakeshore route from the east coast, uh, New York, it was New York. They went up the uh, Hudson River to... Um, uh, and then came across the bottom side of the lakes. And then in Chicago at Union Station, which Union Station is right here. Uh, in Union Station, they uh, transferred to the Empire Builder. And the Empire Builder takes you kind of northwest through uh, Milwaukee, then Minneapolis, uh, then across to Fargo and North Dakota, Montana, into Seattle. Uh, there's a little lake in Idaho as well. Uh, to Seattle. <clears throat> so this is Union Station. Uh, I would say there are two major train stations and then there's also LaSalle. LaSalle is the one that's closest to the Scientology uh, ideal org. Um, there's going to be some noise down here. I think that my mic isolates my voice pretty well. So for most of this, you'll be fine. But we're basically walking into the 
train platforms for Union Station. And we'll see, you see two trains ahead of me. Um, there's to, and then here's a third one over here. These are commuter rails, so they're really just going to be, you know, 60 to 80 miles outside of Chicago that they transport people. Ah, so sorry if the, if the noise is too loud. Heading over to the station. It looked like um, Shannon had quite a few people following her this morning or this afternoon. Um, and I did see a post of uh, somebody saying that the Scientologist flipped, flipped them off. We're right next to the engines right now, so this is the loudest you have to hear. Oh, I can see my mic is pretty loud right now. Sorry about that, folks. Thanks, MC. I'm impressed by how well the mic can isolate sound. We've got one more engine to go through. To me, trains are super cool. I just, I love just transportation and to think that you can get from here to Seattle in 48 hours. Um, these are commuters, so these aren't the trains to take you out, but uh, just behind this train is really where the, um, the Amtrak trains are on that last track. So we're on 15 and 13, Amtrak is 19 and 21. Um, and this would be the Empire. So this is where the Empire Builder leaves Chicago. Um, coming in from the south is the, I think the eastern train line is called Lakeshore. I'm not positive. Thanks, NC. So this is DJI. And what, what I can do is there's a receiver that I plug into my phone and then a, um, a clip-on mic, uh, but if you, you probably see a ugly picture of me, and on my chest is a little black rectangle that's clip-on, that's what's really picking up the sound, and then it's transmitting it to the receiver that's attached to the phone. Uh, and then I, I also use a DJI gimbal, gimbal. <coughs> excuse me, and that's just to keep the camera steady so that all my viewers don't get seasick by the, you know, jittering <laughs> the process around. One thing that you see an awful lot of in um, the Chicago Union Station is um, trains are very common ways for Amish to travel the country. So you oftentimes see an awful lot of Amish uh, in here. And um, they're going to be in their uh, traditional clothing. So uh, the men are typically in, well, they're kind of supposed to be in white shirts, but sometimes they'll be in pastel shirts uh, and suits with a uh, flat brimmed hat. And the women have their head coverings on and pastel colored dresses. <laughs> Excuse me. I need a cough button. I'd be a terrible radio person. So, um, the, when I got off the train, I would have been at about... Uh, 300, no, 400 north, uh, 500 north. And remember, the Scientology building is 650 south. In Chicago, every 800 blocks is a mile. So uh, when, we, when we talk about blocks that's, uh, or streets, the, um, it's, it's 800 blocks per mile. I'm 
bypass the uh, escalator, head up the stairs. We'll leave on Jackson, and uh, Union Station is at Jackson and the River. I really want to do a second channel that's basically Dan Walks LA, but it's Windy City Walks Windy City. Um, this building in front of me is really neat. So that little gray panel that's vertically through the middle of the building, it's basically a map of the Chicago River. And that little red block that you see in there is that building on the map of the Chicago River. So I think that's super cool. Here we've got uh, 300 Lakeside, you know, office building. Uh, the next building is the old post office, which uh, about seven years ago was renovated and now it's massive office space. So it's um, Walgreens has their computer division in there. Pepsi has some division in there. Uh, Uber has quite a bit of floor space in there. And move forward. The tall building that you see on the top there is the Chicago Board of Exchange. And at the top is, I think it's the goddess Ares, um, but it's basically, uh, it's, it's a grain or ag agriculturally related statue or, or um, element. As we hit uh, Wacker on Jackson, we're hitting the Sears Tower. So, a long time ago, this was a really tall building that had significance. Now it's just a really tall building and there's several others that are taller in some way or another. I'm gonna pause for, for a second and we're going to go south on Wacker. This is 311 South Wacker. Um, it's interesting element. You can't see it from this angle, but up on top, it has the uh, a white. Um, they almost look like glass blocks, but it lights up and you can see it from very far away. Uh, so some people call it the White Castle building. Other people call it the, uh, the ice cream cake building. Another view of the old post office. Um, the old post office is interesting. So it, it stopped being operational probably 30 years ago. And the, the, the building fell into a state of disrepair. And again... Um, some commercial entity bought it, uh, revitalized it, and now it's just a, this, this awesome um, newly revitalized office space in Chicago. And throughout the, uh, the space, there are all kinds of pictures of the old post office in work, right? So or like the, uh, you can see all the, the cribs that they put the mail and the boxes into it was a sorting ranch and the building just south of it is the operational post office for Chicago still. Uh, we're going to turn left onto uh, Van Buren. Uh, these in the city center, the east west streets are uh, named by presidents. So at the, at the north end, you've got Washington. Uh, as you come south, you get Monroe, Madison. Madison is a zero street. Uh, Adams, Jackson, Van Buren, and Harrison. And hopefully you've heard of Harrison as we talk about the organization, that Harrison is the um, north side of the block that the Scientology organization is on. And Polk is the south, uh, the street on the south side of the block that the Scientology organization is on. Uh, yet another president. Up, 
I'm going to back up for just a second. Sorry. Um, I know that you've got to squint your eyes like crazy, but you see that crane over there? That crane that we see is the crane that is putting up the building directly behind the Scientology office. So, uh, or Scientology building, sorry. Um, that's, you've got the Scientology building, the alley, and then that, that building that's being um, put up. I see we've got a few people in here. Where's everybody uh, watching from today? Uh, and again, uh, this evening when I get home, I will try to condense this. You know, I've, I've been creating speed runs of all of these live interactions because um, much of the live, uh, let's be honest, that there's not action happening every every second on these. Um, so I try to condense that so that can, uh, people can watch uh, a little bit more uh, abbreviated version of what's going on. I do appreciate all of you who watch right now. Um, it's I feel good that there are people watching in case anything goes awry, <laughs> um, that it's at least recorded. So the news of my demise will be visible to some. Hey, DJ. Thanks for stopping in. Uh, again, we're heading down Van Buren. And when you hear about Chicago Loop, there are plenty of people, and I, I think this is the correct interpretation. There is a elevated train track that circles the central business district. And I will say that that is the loop. San Francisco, very nice. I am going to be out there, well, San Jose or the, the bottom side of the bay. I will be out there um, the first week of April. Um, I'm going out for a conference, but I do plan on um, going out and auditing. I think they call it Green something. They're, the name of that organization uh, is called Green Something. Not sure exactly what that is. Um, it looks like it's uh, pretty well protected with parking lots, so it's not like I can walk up to a front door uh, of that org. But nonetheless, while I'm out there, I'm going to go out and protest. And just a reminder, I've got my um, Aftermath-like uh, sign with me. And then on the other side, we're seeing some of the successful people who have left Scientology and are making a, a rather good living. And then on the inside of this, we'll see it once I get over there, are some of the crimes uh, that Scientology has committed uh, over time. Um, and the, with, with each crime that I kind of call out, I tried to give an example what I don't want people to think is that it's the only example. So, you know, child trafficking is a call out. And then if you don't believe me, here's an example of that child trafficking. How you doing? Um, here's an example of that child trafficking. But this is not the only example of that child trafficking. And do they protect rapists? Yes, they do. And Danny Masterson is the most recent version of that child, uh, of the uh, protection of criminal activities such as uh, sexual assault. Um, and just the idea that the church helped protect Danny Masterson for more than 20 years and um, prevented or thwarted the efforts of the victims to come forward. And the victims were ostracized and forced into disconnection because they had the gall to tell the police a crime had been committed against them. So if I look at the, uh, NC, this is for you. Um, if I looked at the map and I said Scientology in San Jose, um, because the, the conference I'm going to is in, um, I think it's Mountain, Mountain View, right? So Google headquarters. Uh, 
in that space, there were five things that show up on Google. Two of them look like orgs. Three of them look like missions, shall we say. Um, we know that there are some high net worth individuals that are um, students, clients, publics of Scientology. Um, so that's probably where those missions are coming from and it makes perfectly good sense. There are some bazillionaires that live in that area. Uh, so we're taking the escalator up right now at the metro station. This is just uh, an easier way that I don't have to stop as I cross uh, Ida B. Wells or Congress Expressway. Um, so I, I don't know which is the real organization of San Jose, um, but nonetheless, I'm going to go take video of one of those two. And the one that I'm looking at is uh, the easternmost of the five places that uh, um, that show up as Scientology on the Google Maps. I'm going to stop for just a second. I need to tie a shoe. I'm going to put my camera down for a second. You might see black for a bit. Sorry. All right, I think we're back to normal. Um, I'm going to go into the train station for just a second here at La Salle Street. Uh, I'm going to mute and turn off the mic for just a second, but I'll be right back. Give me a minute and a half. All right, so we're heading back out to the platform. Um, I am going to head down the stairs on the south side of Ida B. Wells, and then we'll walk under the tracks over to the organization. Uh, is, is anybody on? Were they watching Shannon earlier and Anything interesting happening on her channel or when she was, I, I know she was here at the organization earlier. If you're in the replay cr crowd, um, please add a comment below. Uh, it helps YouTube understand that there's an engagement with the channel. Only do so if you want to engage with the channel. Uh, I remember uh, there are several business books in the in the world today that say all you really need is a thousand dedicated um, audience members, and with a thousand dedicated audience members, you can change the world. So now we can see the crane from a little bit closer up. You can see the building that's going up. You know, it's got to be, what, 15, 20 stories up at that point. Uh, the black building to the side of the crane is the backside of that uh, Dwight Loft, the Columbia residential space.
And now we're headed down Harrison. I'll cross over to the uh, south side shortly so that we can kind of be in front of the org. Uh, I'm going to have to take a right-hand turn eventually. The building on the left, uh, as I've said before, is basically the immigration court. Um, so this, again, is a place where uh, if you're in the Midwest, this is where you're going to take your oath if you become nationalized. Uh, it's where you apply for um, asylum, diplomacy, uh, diplomatic immunity, and such. This street is a very... Uh, not a well-used street, so there's seldom that much traffic on that street that I just went by. We're about to come up on the alley. I'll look down the alley to see if there's any activity there. There seldom is. Uh, it's Sunday. You know, we're probably not going to see a lot of activity this afternoon, but you know, let's be out here. Let's make sure that they close their blinds, close their doors. Not sure if you watched the uh, the morning session when I was out here, but I was able to get the, the blinds down pretty quickly. And then maybe 30 minutes later, uh, the blinds went back up. So it's uh, <laughs> they're schizophrenic in their, do we want to show the public or do we not want to show the public what we do here? Uh, it's very cold here. Oh, I think I see Israel's bags down there. Um, are they going to show the public what's inside or are they going to hide from the public what's inside? Are you into photography or graphic art? Just protesting the church. <laughs> I believe that women who are sexually assaulted should be able to tell the police and oh, Shannon is still out here, both Shannon and Israel. Hey Shannon, how you doing? Hey Israel. I'm so glad you're here. Need help leaving Scientology? Call us. Is that the aftermath? Yeah, it is the aftermath. Therapy training. Help the care available. Yes. Very good. Hi, Wendy City. Hello, Shannon. Okay. And then... Stand for Humanity Crimes of Scientology. Human trafficking, child abuse, sexual abuse, family disconnection, elder abuse, financial fraud. Are these the... Oh, that's nice. Good job. And, of course, it's about... Some examples. Rose Not the only Mary. examples. There's a thousand other oh, examples yeah. beyond this. Yes. Mary and Francis moved to England. Surge forced to audit me as a child. Not just, and they also abused him. Yeah. And Surge is the only one we heard about. Think about all the ones that oh, yeah. haven't come forward. Well, they're still, I mean, they're still providing courses for kids. Yeah. Lauren La 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 Yeah. Chick Oh, I think that's Mike Brown's mother. It is. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Good job. I like it. Who's Mike Brown? Mike Brown, uh, he was, I think he was a second gen. I know who he was. Who's his mother? Um, uh, uh, Mer Marilyn Chickwick. Mary, uh, Rosemary. Rosemary Chickwack. So Rosemary Chickwack, um, I think that they took out a bunch of financial loans in her name at, at one point. So 
you've been out here quite a bit today, huh? Yeah. I've been out here. yeah. Are you frozen through? Huh? Are you frozen through? I am, yeah, but I get warm. I get cold. Yeah. As long as I'm like moving around a little bit, to keep me warm. Yeah. I didn't have my hood up most of the time because I want people to see my face. Yeah. But um, I just put it up like maybe 20 minutes ago, and I literally, like, ever since I've heard that, I feel like a thousand times. Nice. <laughs> Good to be. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I definitely appreciate that. I promise I'll show my face. If you were living in Chicago, you'd know. But he got into Calypso. They so earlier today, the skinny blind. Yeah. They couldn't for some reason they couldn't pull it down. They had trouble pulling the second blind down for quite a while. Here's the funniest thing. I came first. They thought that I was a part of. The, uh, like I was a regular guy. Right. So we're talking to they said they, they you tried and then to. And it like kicked in and they were like freaked out. Yeah. Then I walked down the block. The doors were shut the second yeah. they ran. Walked down the block, they opened the doors. The second she came. Time to close up. <laughs> <laughs> she is definitely on the radar. I don't know how, like, how they didn't remember me. Right. They called the cops on me. Like, how do you not remember who you called me? You know? Well, I wonder if the, it's a cult, you know. Thanks for protecting rapists. Um, they called the cops once on you today, once on me. Yeah. And then shit, they haven't called since we've been there. And it's funny because there was a few guys that were like having this event on top of the thing. Yeah. And they were talking to us, so we thought they might think that we're connected. But they didn't call the cops. Yeah, I... I I hate to give them any credit, but there might be this idea that they understand who's innocent or uh, a non-interested right, party. Right, a bystander yeah. who's just a part of the group. Yeah. Right. Um, and so I'm guessing you've got 50 subscribers by now. I don't, not yet. No, but it's because I okay. only recently opened up this okay. YouTube channel, so it'll be there. I no took problem. a video today, like a funny video. Yeah. Not Informative too, right? And then uh, I'm gonna post it tonight. Excellent. And, um, someone from LA, one of one of the people from LA, was like, "Please don't you post that tonight." Excellent. I appreciate that. So they they gave me three. Yeah. How do you like that? By the way, I think I'm gonna buy one too. So I do like that we can do that. I think it looks amazing. So you understand they're a cult, right? <laughs> Here's all the crimes. That they're some of the crimes. Um, the nice thing is, so you can see that I've got the power on it. Okay. So yeah, um, it just stays stable. So the idea that I'm not getting all the audience so seasick. Effective. Yeah. So I can do whatever I want here and people are not. Yeah. Right. right. Um, they it's right, right. Did they break your phone too? Do you have, um, activity or actions against them? On these things, like the. Well, I, may, I did not complain about the phone right. or the, the. I complained about the assault plan. Yeah. Because I don't. It, I'll find out in discovery what ha who that guy is. I don't even know who assaulted me. Right. I still don't have a name. Aaron Smith Levin never answered. That is, I do this. Uh, both people. Yeah. Um, I think he was a cop. A uh, cop or really? a PI, either, either way, right? Yes. That's what I think. Uh, cop P.I. Blue, Blue Star, right? That was mighty close to you. <laughs> <laughs> Just literally, yeah. it's true. There's like, somebody in there today from Blue Star. Don't be out here yourself. Yeah. Like, make sure you don't, you know. So those first couple of days that I was here, they had Blue Star here. And then I think that we we put few uh, quite a few complaints into them, both on Google and otherwise. And I didn't see them at all until, and this is the first time I've heard them back Me there. Too. I haven't so. seen them. Uh, Blue Star, 
until today, and it's a woman. That, yeah. that lady walked yeah. in and asked her. She's still there. She, oh, did she walk out she the back? Okay. Because she was standing in back when I was standing. You didn't go to me? I'm talking to her. I'm asking her. I wonder if that happened. That must have happened when I was there, right? I don't know. Yeah. I asked her if it's bad. What did she say? Nothing. Uh, if they're blue star, they're private. They don't have to identify. Right. But for a second, yeah. you could see who's there. Know that, but, but I mean, you know what I mean? Is. But definitely ask. Um, the you know the, we had the cops out earlier, and again, I thought it was a good inter interaction. I don't think that the that all cops are buying what they're saying. So thank you, Israel. Put my hat on. I was watching. <clears throat> I had a friend out here, and I loved that. Every time somebody would walk by, she would remind them that this cult doesn't allow females to tell the police that they've been sexually assaulted. Yeah, it's such a significant component of yeah. who they are. The SA and the child trafficking are the okay, two guys, most horrific aspects of the cult. Here. 31 hardcore people that hung out for the whole, all those hours. So now I'm handing the torch over. <laughs> Please go to Time for your warm up. If yeah, we're going to go. Uh, I've been here since like. Okay. Not, I got here like I will 10 see minutes after the Yeah. Right and squirrely with the dog walk. Okay? Love you guys. Thank go you so much for being here. Mods, thank you so much for working as hard as you guys do. I'm starting to understand how hard it is to be a mod. So hats off to you guys. And I love all of my viewers. Today. Thanks for showing you. You're the bomb. You're the bomb. You're the bomb. Bye, guys. <laughs> bye, guys. Bye, 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 bye. Love you. Mwah. Take care, Shannon. Go warm up. Yeah. Go grab some coffee. Yes. Done. 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 <laughs> Excellent. So, how, how long is it? Let's see. Four hours. 342. That's more than enough. Did you come out early this morning, like you said? You yeah, did? yeah. I was out, so I was watching. Uh, they called the police, um, and the police said, "Yeah, they called for disturbance." And I asked the cop. I said, "Disturbance." I said, "That's a new one." Did you see a disturbance? And he go, "Well, I had to call and answer their complaint." They were both very, very gracious. And my friend that was here, there was a female and a male cop. There was also an officer um, who went to the back door because um, when I the second one pulled up, and I said, "Oh, so." They need two police for this. So she says, actually three. And there was somebody in the back. When the when the two officers came back out, they identified who they were. They said, hey, it was a complaint about disturbance. And I said, well, did you see a disturbance? And they wouldn't answer that, but they said, we have to answer the complaint. And the my friend said to was talking to the female officer saying, listen, this cult won't let females tell the police that they've been sexually assaulted. And I think that landed with that it officer should. so um, and she was very good about every single woman that walked by these are just I, I think they were patrol officers um and i think they're just getting called in hey snap face how you doing all right uh i i just saw a little bounce in the uh members so uh hopefully you're coming over from i can't believe Shannon. want more of this torture <laughs> Um, the guy that tried to lure me away, he's the one that called the cops and he walked out earlier and he went down to urban pantry and got something when he came back and I said, Hey, do you want to have that discussion with me now? And he kind of waved his head to both sides and no, I'm not going to do it. Mean? You know, uh, oh, so like, uh, maybe. yeah. Uh, and, and he's not going to. And then I said, Hey, I, I thought that Scientology taught you guys great communication skills. Are you willing to exercise they them? Have none. And none. yeah, no, so. no skills whatsoever. Their communication skills are no comment in a nonverbal fashion. They just run off. They ran off today. When I got here, five minutes after I got here, they shut everything down yeah. and that's yeah. how it's been. This was strange this morning. So I got them to close everything pretty quickly. And then maybe 20 minutes into it, they raised all the blinds. So it's like, okay, fine. That's great. You know, maybe they're starting to feel that we shouldn't be in the shadows. And then maybe an hour later, they pulled everything down again. So. Yeah. Uh, no, they were, they were down when the police came. Oh, you know what? They were up when the police were here. Yeah. They were down shortly after the so police were here. Yeah. Um, they thought they could get rid of you easily. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
Thank you, Snotface. You know who was here? Did you watch any of the I did see, I, I saw somebody Juanita. that I didn't, uh, so yes. The, she was there, you know Juanita. She was here on, on Wednesday, I think she was here. She comes all the time. Yeah. And she, but she was a star at yeah. that March 3rd okay. incident. The March 3rd trauma. Yeah. Um, <laughs> she was there bringing water and Gatorade and cookies that she made herself. And she's, she was wonderful. She's Excellent. just great. Excellent. Wait, stay there for just a second. And we got the nice Scientology sign on top of your head. So. <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> it's a call. Yes. I'll do a screenshot. Yes. <laughs> All right. All right. You guys take care. Thank Enjoy. You for coming. I'm leaving. Yeah. I'm you guys are going to go to a restaurant and get something warm or. No. I'm but going okay. Home. All right. Yeah. I'm probably going to come back. I got to go. Okay. Are you really? <laughs> I could just slap you. Are you going to walk through the I am. Yeah. All right. You guys take care. Safe Me travels. Too. You too. Wait, don't we have. Go down the alley by yourself. Uh, I don't really mind the the alley doesn't really bother me. Um, and again, I don't get close to anybody. I'm gonna stay. I keep my distance. Um, I will say that. I. The hat shows you something that I've done in the past. And by the way, that's a recent past. Uh huh. So. Oh, okay. So that's I'm your skill. rather nimble. That's your. Um, that's your One of my secret followers is the, the reason that I was a smart aleck when I was a kid, and it probably made me become the fastest runner I know. Yeah, yeah, smart. So, I like it. You are a runner. It's not face it says goodbye. Yes, oh, bye, it is. Snotface. They did come over. That's good. Nice. Good, good. Bye, guys. Thanks for stopping in today. <laughs> Thanks right. for some supporting the cause. Yes, it's a good one. It's important. And I you agree. Guys, you guys help us. Not just help us. You guys are the reason we're able to do Correct. It. And I know you guys can't see my face, but if you go to mine, it's Yisrael Brownstein, Y-I-S-R-O-E-L-B-R-O-W-N-S-T-E-I-N. Come check me out, and uh, I'll start live streaming really soon. Excellent. You guys are the best. <laughs> Israel Brownstein, take care. Safe so travels. Much. Uh, again, chilly. It's really chilly here in Chicago. Um, their ability, you know, there, there's no real foot traffic here today. Um, earlier today, uh, I was here with a friend of mine, and I'm, I'm so happy with the courage that my friend had that um, she really did address every female that walked on the sidewalk and said, this cult won't allow females to report yeah, sexual cult, abuse, 100% a cult, that this cult won't allow females to report sexual abuses, right? And the gentleman just walked by, right? He's going to Columbia College. They absolutely have students that are um, indoctrinated. They've, they've drank the Kool-Aid. Um, <laughs> yeah, I will say that it was 65, 70, two days ago. Sorry. Oh, it was probably 65 or 72 days ago. Uh, today, eh, we're sub 40 all day. And I'm guessing that right now it's probably very, very low 30s. Uh, when I was out here earlier with my friend, we got a little bit of snow flurries. So that was fun. Um, I'm going to go across the street and see how many of the... Um, the windows are open upstairs. Uh, one of the things we saw earlier today was that, um, yeah. So, uh, my friend always says, well, this is just spring in Chicago. And I always say that this is Chicago's third winter. So we just do winter all the time. Uh, I'm just going to cross the street to get uh, a broader shot of the building. Um, so that we can see what's lit up upstairs here. Um, again, I, I don't have any firsthand knowledge, but uh, one of the students of, uh, at Columbia, he said that he came in, I think on grand opening day, so Monday, and um, that 
on all of these floors, he was seeing classroom space. And by the way, classroom space is uh, a place where two people can stand across one another. It's not um, auditorium classroom space like we would, we would think of in a college or in a, in a school. Um, yeah, uh, Scientology will claim they do worship so that they can get their... Uh, they used to say they were worshiping on Sundays so that protesters couldn't be within 50 feet of the organization. Um, but the ACLU uh, shut that, that down probably 15 years ago. Um, you can see in the middle, we've got a couple of, just under the S to the left, you see the, that window's open. Um, most of the places they have uh, shades down, but you can see the lighting up there. Uh, yeah, I'll say that in Chicago, somewhere in February, we had a brutal week, right? We had that minus X degrees almost every day for about a week. Um, but we've had some rather softball winters lately uh, here in Chicago. And I gotta be honest, I'm, I'm grateful that we've had those uh, easier winters uh, I'll head back across. Kind of a, a slow Sunday here. <coughs> uh, if you saw the the Friday Live, uh, you would have seen um, a, a young novice Scientologist, uh, person of color, had come out, looked a little bit confused, looked at our signs, and very quickly, before we could engage him, uh, a staff member came out and kind of escorted him down the street, you know, took, uh, took him by the elbow, uh, escorted him, sorry, um, escorted him down the street, uh, as I was letting the person know that this church is known for its crimes, it's known for its um, pyramidal, uh, pyramid scheme money grabbing mechanisms, um, the idea that it doesn't let you, uh, it makes you disconnect from your family if your family is not a Scientologist. Um, you know, I'm surprised too because there are several bars, right? Uh, <laughs> right across the street. Uh, and apparently today it's an Irish bar, but first draft um, is here. On the corner, you've got um, Half Sour. Uh, next door, you've got Paisans, which is a pizza place, but it's also a bar. And then uh, you might be able to see the, um, the blue Cubs sign that's, that's down there, or the flag for the, the Cubs. Uh, and that's called All Stars. It's, uh, they claim their seafood. Um, probably the best frozen seafood in the universe. And if you didn't detect sarcasm there, sorry about that. Um, but I, I would have expected more people here um, just because it's uh, St. Patrick's Day. Now, now St. Patrick's Day is really celebrated on the Saturday here in Chicago. That's when they dye the river. Um, today, there was a parade up in Norwood. Loved it. I went up there. You know, that's the... Uh, I went up there between these two uh, lives. Um, and that was when I um, allowed uh, or w uh, watched... Uh, um, a very, it's a family oriented parade. So you're seeing a lot of kids, a lot of high schools, a lot of local businesses, um, just walking down the street and cheering and throwing, throwing beads, so on and so forth. I'm uh, not sure if you can see the reflection in there, but here you're seeing uh, my sign, which is showing the, uh, the crimes of Scientology, Oops. Uh, which, right, we've got the um, human trafficking, child abuse, uh, elder abuse, uh, with some examples. Oh. The wind just got my sign, uh, took it onto the Scientology property, which means that I'm going to have an officer visit me soon because 
they will claim that I just trespassed. Uh, however, they have uh, no, no, no trespassing signs, and nobody from Scientology has ever come out here and expressed to me that they needed to uh, have me trespassed. Um, how you doing, Sally? Yeah, I would say that as Chicagoans, we're used to this, so why aren't we out here? And this morning, I saw several college kids, um, uh, uh, college students out here in shorts. Now, they realized they made a mistake, and they quickly went indoors whenever they could, but that did, uh, that was something we saw today. <laughs> Yes, thanks. <laughs> uh, I'm going to walk and wander a little bit just to uh, generate some heat. It's rather chilly out here today. I don't really, you know, the standing still isn't awesome. Um, yeah. <laughs> Good old Lafayette. Um, oh, the, as I was saying earlier, right, so the, the staff member came out and escorted the, the newer initiate away from us. That staff member is actually somebody who works for, um, I think it's called Dream Makers. Uh, I'll put it up on the comments board soon. But um, one of the uh, people who typically is in the chat quite a bit sent me uh, a TikTok channel where they were sharing all of the people that are members of Scientology. And uh, her name's Jessica. I, I don't want to really disclose her last name. No need to, uh, to dox her. Uh, it's not that hard to figure out what I'm talking about. But uh, Jessica works for uh, what I would presume is a Scientologist public, and the person is a disbarred lawyer. So apparently uh, the most ethical organization on the planet uh, can't keep their lawyers in ethics with the bar. So the, uh, the bar, uh, you know, the, the lawyer, uh, the, law, the legal um, group in Chicago or in the Chicago land area disbarred him. He now runs, he is a white male and he runs what he proclaims to be the largest minority owned investment firm in Chicago. And I'm not sure what minority wealthy white men fall into. Um, but he is a wealthy white man, uh, and he runs an investment firm and, uh, Jessica happens to work for him. And that's the way that staff members kind of supplement their income, right? So, uh, staff members are, most ex-scientologists will tell you the staff members make less than Sea Org members and right Sea Org members make 47 to 50 dollars a week on days when uh, on weeks when things are good they make much less money on days when st on weeks when stats are down uh, yeah agreed stop face and again I, I love this city. This city is fairly well known for its corruption. Um, if I think about the police corruption here, most of the police corruption is to individually line your pockets. Whereas if I think about the Hollywood division of Los Angeles, that's a systematic problem. That system is broken. I don't care who you are coming into that, um, to that district. 
you're going to be corrupted fairly quickly. Um, whereas in Chicago, um, most police that have a corrupt bent are individually corrupt and they figure out a way to line their own pockets. Um, but it's not as systematic, I would say, as, as you see out there. Um, if you've been watching the channel for a bit, you've seen that I've had four different police interactions. All of them have been, I'll say, rather positive, right? The, the police have said, yep, the church claims this. They're wrong. You guys are allowed to be out here anytime you want to. They'll tell us that, hey, here's what trespassing means, and it's their property. Don't go on their property. And, you know, I've been fairly fortunate. I have not been on their property ever. Um, but we've had people that are stepped up on the curb and things of that nature. Um, I, I try to remind the police that if the building doesn't have a no trespassing sign and the agent of the building has not asked us to leave, we're not trespassing that um, trespassing takes either a notice by signage or a notice by um, encounter or verbal encounter. Little Papillon. <laughs> yes, it's just, just you and me, it's not face. And um, I'm sniffling a lot, so I'm just bringing all the snot in. I don't think that we're going to see, um, like the org is only up until six, and see, I got down here kind of late. Uh, it's 521, so the org is probably only open for another 40 minutes. <clears throat> We didn't see many publics. Now, today, and I think it's the second time I've seen the same family, there was a woman and three children, and I'm going to say that the children were somewhere between 8 and 14, um, came in. Uh, you, you will be able to see that if you go back and look at the earlier um, channel. Uh, and just a reminder, I know it's too late because anybody who's watching this on the replay <laughs> will have been sad that they watched this far through, but... Um, I've been doing speed runs of these lives so that we can kind of see the, uh, the interactions quicker, right? Just a, um, a faster element uh, on that process. Um, that there were, you know, the, it's, uh, I'm going to walk around back because I, I just want to uh, get a little bit of walking in. Um, plus, maybe they'll raise a blind or raise a window. Um, that when you see children walk in there and we now understand what children fall prey to in this organization, it's just so discouraging that a parent with any parenting skills would expose their child to this. And, and I understand they're in the cult. They, they don't understand, um, all of the downsides of what's going on here. They don't recognize it as a cult, which is, is a shame. Um, but they, they're public. So I want to expect more of them that you have access to the internet. You have access to information. Um, you're not under the same rigorous, controls of a staff member or a, a Sea Org member. So how are you not discovering this information? Uh, we're south to Polk Avenue. Uh, again, shout out to Half Sour. Half Sour was rather generous to us on March 3rd. They allowed the protesters to use the restrooms in there. Uh, we did a little bit of staging in there. This is basically where you saw Captain Harris um, telling Shannon that she couldn't go on the property, but 
uh, the uh, on the the white line to the left is really where the barricades were put up. And we'll head to the alley. I know I've been asked not to go in the alley, but I'm going to say that I, I feel rather safe in here. Um, any Scientologist per se, I'm not really worried about <laughs> their aggression. Um, uh, a paid for hired gun. Yeah, I'm a little bit more worried about that. I will tell you that uh, I tend to keep my distance. I don't need to be, I'm, I'm not somebody who wants to say, let me get in your face. You know, I don't like auditors who um, antagonize people and then are surprised that they would come after them. I understand they're not supposed to come after you and that words are different than actions. Um, but you know, I, I tend to uh, keep myself at a safe distance. Um, so I do live within city limits. Now I feel comfortable that the city limits are pretty big. Um, so I'm not undressing too much there. Uh, I would also say that while my, my channel is still small, um, that very quickly, they're going to know exactly who I am. They're going to start <laughs> negative information about me. They're going to try to contact people and express to them why I should no longer be associated with them. <clears throat> but I'm not willing to until I understand fully that, that they know exactly who I am. I'm not really willing to unveil myself yet. Um, when I was very, so I've always lived within 30 miles of the city. Um, when I was younger, I would come into the city at 2, 3 a.m. And I used to love, I would go to like the, the Tribune or the Sun-Times. They might be on, on strike and they would have a burn barrel. So garbage can, right? And, and they're, they're going to light a fire in there to keep things warm. That's how they generate heat. Uh, so now we're at the back door. These are the three back doors of the uh, organization. Uh, those boxes have been here since this morning, but they're organized differently than they were this morning. Uh, and then this uh, this roll-up door is also Scientology. And this morning, I think it's been here for a long time. I just never noticed it before. Um, this is a little hand crank that if you crank, if you put a crank inside of that loop and then you spin that crank, it will turn the chain, which will raise and lower the door here. Um, the, the way that I've always kind of told people is that most criminals, and, and by the way, I'm not a lawyer, I'm not some, don't, don't act as I do, I'm just going to tell you how I've always looked at this. I think that most criminals want to be able to surprise you. So if you keep your head on a swivel and let people know that you're there, I think you're improving your chances of, of safety. I'm not saying that now that you know that, go into the most dangerous places in the universe and, and just if you see somebody, they won't attack you. But I do believe that that's a, a fairly true statement, that they mostly re rely upon the act of surprise. And if they can't surprise you, you're probably in better shape. Um, Gene and Jude's, and then there's also Gene and Giorgetti's for the steakhouse. The, um, the person I was with this morning, she happens to be, uh, I think, vegan, maybe veg vegetarian, because she'll eat eggs. So she's a vegetarian. Um, during Lent, she usually travels the city to find uh, the best uh, pepper and egg sandwiches. And one of them, she was up in uh, the northwest corner of Chicago recently, and there's a place up there called Wolfie's, which is a hot dog place, and it's got these iconic um, uh, statues, uh, emblems, not, let's see here. Uh, if you look up Wolfie's Chicago, you'll see that they have um, interesting signage or, or uh, standout signage. Uh, and she surprisingly said that while it's a hot dog place, they have a great uh, egg and pepper sandwich. <laughs> uh, 
Um, what else uh, up there? So I do agree. Gene and Jude's great. Um, Byron's is another hot dog stand that I, you know, I used to live near a Byron's. So I'd get off the train in the evening and I'd grab a hot dog and walk home. Um, the, what I want to do is, <laughs> um, I, I want to visit a bunch of hot dog stands and do a, uh, uh oh, hot dog. <laughs> montage for uh, our friend Nora. Nice. <laughs> and Wolfie's has, uh, I can't remember what their outside is. So there's the other one is in Norwood Park. Um, there's a, another hot dog stand. Oh, darn it. And they've got two statues of hot dogs, uh, a male and female hot dog. Uh, it's on Milwaukee at about Foster, I'm thinking. And now that I've got Snapface doing all my research for me, uh, that one's interesting because all of their hot dogs is, you get a hot dog and a fry, like you can't get a hot dog alone, but you get a hot dog and fry and it comes in a box. So really, really nice. Awesome. Skateboard and puppy. Uh, the other one, so Port Portillo's is a Chicago land staple, uh, and I'm a big fan of Portillo's. Uh, the beef and cheddar sandwich is, is one of my favorites. It's a beef and cheddar on croissant. Um, and then um, Al's number one beef, which I don't know where the, uh, yeah, Superdog, that's right. Superdog is another one that it's got two of these uh, hot dog statues, male and female, uh, and it's a drive-in. Uh, and the attendants will come to your car uh, on roller skates. You can walk in as well, but the attendants will come to your car on on roller street, on roller skates. Uh, do you what uh, neighborhood, or at least are you north, south, east, west? And the other 14 of you, you're allowed to converse with me too. I'll answer your questions, I promise. You know, I don't know if I've ever been to Russell, so I'm gonna look at that when I get home. There's the, uh, boy, I can't, there's a famous chef and he's, responsible for Q, which is up in uh, Old Town. Did you have a good day at the cult? You know, the church founder said that people of color were degraded. Okay. On the other side of the river? And the, the river that starts with D. Yeah. It's nice. Now, my, uh, so I went to college with um, uh, one of my teammates was Elwood Park. And I remember that being, um, at least at that point in time, and this is not yesterday, uh, uh, basically a little Italy. It was a heavily Italian um, neighborhood or, or village.
Little Italy in Chicago got the shrift because Little Italy used to stand where the um, the Eisenhower Expressway is. So you've got parts of Little Italy that are north of Lake Grand. How you doing? Do you like your new neighbors, the cult of Scientology? Yeah, good. <laughs> um, yeah. So um, when they decided to put the expressway in, they had to figure out where they're going to put it. And, and Burnham had already said that that really should be going out on, uh, on that parallel is where that uh, expressway should have left the city. And it's the Eisenhower. Um, and it kind of broke up the neighborhood where if you go to Grand Kinsey in that area, you're going to kind of see some white tablecloth Italian places. And then uh, on the south side of the interstate, uh, you get to Taylor Street, which Taylor Street is another heavily Italian district. And um, there it's a little bit more um, uh, Americanized or um, it, it feels more chain like in regards to the Italian restaurants that are down there. But that's another you know, quasi Italian village that's down there. Yeah, Chicago seems to be always expanding. What's really interesting, if you look at the, um, so uh, like many cities, you know, right? New York uh, started out as a different city and then it acquired the five bureaus. Um, Boston's another one that expanded out into those neighborhoods where they used to be their own uh, distinct city and then they kind of got gobbled up. <coughs> In Chicago, um, as they would gobble up these uh, villages that were on the, at that time, the boundary lands of Chicago, those villages would have streets with the same names that Chicago did. So there was this renaming fiasco of, you know, you can't have a main street in this town because Chicago already has a main street. Have an Elm Street because Chicago already has an Elm Street. So a lot of challenges in that process. Yeah, I would not be surprised by that. Sorry. For your replay people, I, I apologize that I forget to bring up the conversations that people are having in the live chat. And by the way, hey, replay people, come and join the live chat. It's much more fun. I just got a phone call, so I think I'm going to go mute for a second. I'm going to have to go back and fix that. All right, hopefully I'm back on the air. Uh, I just got a phone call and sometimes that screws up the, uh, the microphone. <laughs> Thanks, Um If you ever look at the... Uh... <laughs> Thanks, Lucy. And by the way, uh, if you, uh, uh, Steve, if you want to put your app in there, I, I no problem. Um, Steve, uh, Smooth Steve just started um, a channel and he's been out protesting. I think the org is on Long Island. I'm not positive, but if you want to give any uh, any information about that, that'd be great. Um, There we go. Oh, it's Times Square. Sorry. Um, I'm. Uh, ooh. We have somebody sitting in front of the shade here. Um, I'm very impressed by how many people uh, that we have who are never in. All right, I'm going to have to go back. And Amy says I got to go back and look at uh, Steve's live today. 
Um, you know, I kind of think about this, that for the second gens and the ex-Scientologists in general, you know, I, I came into this through Aaron, and I think I caught Aaron through a, a different audit. Like, I was always listening to police audits, uh, or, or you know, yeah, police audits would be the best way of saying it. And then I came across uh, Aaron, or A.A. Ron, as many of us know him. Um, the uh, So the second gens have been telling their story for quite some, well, some have been telling their story for longer than others, right? Um, You've, you've got so many out there, uh, Relatable Reese, Natalie with three generations. And by the way, if you're not uh, a member uh, or a uh, subscriber to Natalie, you're going to catch, like, I didn't know that uh, Steve was out there today. Natalie would have let me know that Steve was out there today. <laughs> Natalie does a recap every morning. And, you know, I think that's that's really important because there's just too many channels now. But if you get past the second gens and the ex-Scientologists that had Scientology not screwed with uh, William Goode, I don't think they'd be in this spiral that they're in right now. Um, <laughs> yes, I agree. And by the way, uh, so Steve, if you do clips, she does whatever she can to try and help promote that. So just... I email her every night if I think there's anything significant that we, that we saw during the day on there. Um, but getting back to that, right? So Scientology wants to come out and screw with William Goode, who's actually ranting against the police, just happens to be in front of a Scientology space, and they kind of get under his bonnet. And then William Goode says, well, I, I have no problem ending you. I'm going to be out here every day until you're no longer here. And then I, I think it was William, Jessica, and then everybody, right? Confidence, Chris, LA Cam, uh, Chris without a Hellcat. And I haven't seen Chris without a Hellcat, Hellcat for a while. Um, but just the plethora of those TikTokers slash YouTubers who just, we, we, we just make it tough on Scientology to exist. Um, and here in Chicago, um, I will say that for about a month, I was thinking, I should go out there. I should go out there. I should go out there. And then I saw a BMW out there. And I think, what, a week and a half later, I said, you know, what? I'm going to go see. I'm going to go join BMW. Um, and then uh, Shannon, well, Shannon was before me, so it was, you know, trashy cut was the first Chicagoan and then uh, Trash was followed by Shannon and then I went out there um, I took some drone footage of the old organization I took some drone footage of this organization um, before the uh, the garbage bag tech came down from here and the uh, S up there um, and right Austin uh, Portland, Seattle, New York, um, uh, Suppressive Sherry and Declared Dave down in Cincinnati. Um, it's, it's really amazing how many people have been putting this out here. You know, <clears throat> one thing, hey, aren't you supposed to get any food? Uh, <laughs> one thing that I like about Trashy is Trashy has... Um, PTS for life, Jeff's demeanor. Trashy has conversations. He's he's not confrontational, and that's again the different styles all over the place. But I like that Trashy gets people to talk. The what was it? Was it Wednesday night or Friday night? Um, the the public in yellow that he was able to engage, and the guy stopped and talked to him for you know two minutes. Um, one of the things that I loved about what the guy in yellow said was Scientology is only here to stop wars. And I just want to remind you all of the list of wars that Scientology has been able to stop. All right. I have completed the list of wars that Scientology has been able to stop. They have zero effectiveness in stopping wars.
Yeah, that's right, Steve. <laughs> They're unsuccessful. They're O for everything. So that's one of those things. I think this is important. Scientology will claim that they're helping humanity besides clearing the planet. So they've got Narconon and Criminon and CCHR um, and you know any number of these front groups that are out there. But I have never seen one of those front groups do something significant. I, I don't see that they don't have a food bank. They don't help house the homeless. They don't help communities. They are um, organizations that they're very good at propaganda. So their marketing arm is very, very strong that they will claim they do an awful lot. There is zero evidence that they've done anything to improve any community that they've ever been in. You know, there is no business in downtown Clearwater. To see such a potentially vibrant city shuttered, right, the, with, with regards to what's going on in that space, that Scientology owns all the property, Scientology owns all the property, and Scientology just doesn't enact any businesses in that um, city. You know, I think that's a, a correct, uh, sorry. All right. If you guys remind me to stop being stupid and not marking these comments, um, I think this is a correct statement, but I do think that that's a low key element and um, they don't announce, like they don't tell the public they're donating to the police. They just help the police in regards to that. So they're buying the, the policeman's balls and they're, um, they're donating to road races for them. They're just sending money in the police's way. Agree, right? So what is Scientology doing to improve the lives of the people that are here? You know, hey, I really appreciate that you're clearing the planet and that you're making us safe so that when Zeno, that we can escape Zeno's prison. Um, but, you know, while we're here in the prison, can you help us get fed? Can you help us get home? Can you help us get educated? Um, so there's an awful lot of, you know, uh, the statement I make oftentimes when they bring down the shades is that they need to work in the shadows and Scientology really only works in the shadows um, that they cannot stand up to the light of day. Um, there's Yeah. All right. I'm going to make that. I'm going to say this wrong. <laughs> Mequon. Uh, which sounds like, wasn't there, is the Mequon Delta part of a Vietnam offensive? Do you like your new cult? <laughs> um, uh, what was I saying? Oh, that they just, they, they hide from public, right? Yeah, I wonder, and, and again, uh, Steve, as you're just starting up, um, have you made their radar? Uh, last, all right, time goes by fast. I think it was last night, Aaron had mentioned that they don't, like, the, the top of Scientology doesn't send a blast out to all orgs saying beware of protesters because that would tell those orgs that protesters exist. And where protesters don't exist, they don't want those orgs to understand that we're under fire. They want those orgs to think everything is grand, everything is beautiful. Um, so 
the, it, you know, there's a possibility that it's going to take a little bit of time before they realize that New York's under siege. And until that point, they probably won't be doing this. Now, one of the things that I'll say I've been doing, whenever I come up here, is um, I really try to get up to this window. And on this window, right, there's, there's four windows, four big windows across here. On this window, there's an administrative desk about halfway deep into the building. Um, at, at which point I try to get their attention very quickly. And as they notice I'm here, you know, it's the, oh my gosh, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? I know we'll pull the blinds. So they come up and pull the blinds very quickly. Um, and that's really all I want to do early on is let me, when I first show up, I want to make sure those blinds come down fast because I, I don't want people to think that the place is even open. Um, and then next I try to make sure that I'm attacking the door. And listen, for all those listening, when I say attacking, I want to say, I want to put eyes on the door so that they realize, hey, I can still see you and they're going to have to hide from the public over here as well. Yeah, I'd be curious, do you, uh, how old is the building in New York? Excellent job, Auditing Scientology. Hey, uh, Auditing Scientology, do you, um, have you tried to make contact with the Reese? Is, is this something that Reese might be comfortable with? I think that she's very comfortable growing her audience um, at, at our desktop, but that's that's awesome. We were able to get them to, to bring down the shade the the shade so quickly. Yeah, if um, I don't know if you if you look at you know my my first video or two, uh, it would have been up at the the Lakeview building, and you know that building is not a clean and fresh and newly renovated building. Um, it's, it's seen uh, some age. All right, now I gotta figure out who Andrew Santino is. Okay. Uh, was Bad Friends Network TV or is it uh, on one of the streaming services? And yeah, I agree with that. That you know, if if she's comfortable uh, reaching her audience the way she's reaching her audience, that's excellent. Um, but that would be excellent to. Uh, I I would love to see her out, and and I think that it's been cathartic for. Uh, Liz, Liz, Gail, Gail, and for Nora and for, you know, Liz Ferris uh, to come out to these orbs. Yeah, um. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I think that Austin is on high alert. That the, um, the amount of pressure that Pearl on her own <laughs> Pearl Snappy on her own puts on that organization, let alone all the people that are out in support of Pearl. Um, that's awesome. Gotcha. Yes, I saw that uh, he um, the the Stevie Weeby interview. Um, that that was done recently, uh, and I couldn't tell if yeah okay um, was it a legitimate concern or was it something like uh, uh, one of these you know I, I get called for trespassing all the time and I haven't been anywhere near trespassing. And one of the things that I'll remind people that if I if I touch that doorstep, I'm on their property. If I put my hand over their doorstep, 
I am not on their property. So um, I can I can take any film of this I want to. And quite honestly, again, even if I was on their property, they can't do anything because there is no sign that says I can't trespass. And they have never told me not to trespass. Okay. Thanks, Michael. And Amy said similar statements. Um, and again, I love the courage that some of these people have. Now, I'm going to say I'm not a confrontational guy. I don't want to put camera in your face and provoke you to the point of retaliation. Um, but yeah, I'm going to follow you up and down the street and I'm going to tell you what I believe about this organization and try to warn you of, about what's going on. Um, I, I don't need to find where the boundary is. I feel that um, you can be pretty damn convincing and stay well within your boundary of that. Yeah, you know, again, with the four police interactions, none of them have ever said stop doing anything. You know, one of them tried to cop explain to us what trespassing was, and we tried to explain to him, have you seen any of us trespass? And the answer has always been no. Yeah. Yeah, DOA is another one that I love what DOA does. I'm going to say that <laughs> he's more adventurous than I am. Um, in, in, in the way that I want to position myself here. Um, I'm, uh, yeah, I want to be a high road guy and I want to make it tough on the organization. I don't want to, you know, I want to make it as hard as possible for them to recruit new members. Um, I very much worry about the idea that they've got students who are recruiters because they can recruit outside of my perimeter. So I can't, I can't go into that building and I can't stop them from recruiting. Um, but I can walk along the streets. I can go to any table that they set up. And I will tell you that every time they set up a table, I'm going to ask for a permit and I'm going to call the police and ask them for the, the permit. Uh, for their ability to, to be out there on the with a table in that space. Um, because I work in this area, there will be times where I might just come in here for 15 minutes. And by the way, I appreciate all of you who listen to, to the chat. It's, it's you know, I, I really do appreciate that. Hopefully I'm, I'm doing a service for you. But when I have, you know, 30 minutes between meetings, yeah. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to make them take the blinds down. And if I see somebody out passing literature, I'm going to walk behind them and I'm going to, um, I'm going to tell all the people that get handed out that, uh, that literature, what this cult is about. Oh no. Um, yeah, I agree with this, that listen, there are all forms of protests. And there are people that, you know, it's, it's a dramatic element to be able to get the arrest. I just have no desire for it. And it's, it's not something that I'm willing to um, put up with. And by the way, I did not take it that way. And, and 100% uh, it's not face. I, I didn't think you were calling that. I'm just saying that, uh, is, is it Natalie who said, People get into Scientology for a thousand different reasons and they get out for a thousand different reasons. And I believe we need the confrontational people in certain situations and we need the conversational. Um, I'm a big fan. I, I identify closer with what Jeff from PTS for Life does. I identify closer with what Trashy does. Um, you know, if you're a staff member, I kind of want to say, why are you protecting criminals? Why are you, um, 
what, what is it about this church that helps you? If it's somebody walking in, I want to give them the information about the crimes that are attributed to the organization, cult, <laughs> um, in, that, in that space. So um, I have, I can tell that I have different tactics when I'm talking to these, right? Th this morning, there was a, a, a very elderly lady you know, that, you know, no idea how old, she was definitely older than me, could have easily been um, a generation or more older than I am. And the idea that she was stuck at this door and had to knock to get in um, was ridiculous, right? And, and I felt bad for her as a human being that, you know, she is not young. She needs a walking assistance device. Um, and she has to knock to get into her own church. So, uh, again, for, for anybody that watched the earlier um, live that I did, right, I was here, uh, I was here from what, 9 to 11 uh, this morning, 9.30 to 11. Um, I could tell that the cops were frustrated that they, they got called out for here. Like, it was a nonsense element. And the uh, uh, Officer Garcia, especially, who was the female officer that we spoke with, um, it was not hard to see that she was frustrated by what occurred. Um, like, there's there's no reason for us to be called out here. Your, your complaint is that you don't like somebody who doesn't like the crimes you commit. You don't like that there's a person um, exercising their First Amendment right. So there's no way in the world that, that that's a police call worthy. Now, I do think that as Shannon and Trashy and Israel and myself and, and others, and, and those are the ones I know, I, whenever I uh, list off the channels. I, I don't have favorites. I don't have not favorites. It's the people I remember in this uh, in this space. Um, I do think that the longer we're out here, that the church will escalate their tactics. And we're probably going to see people who come out here like the older man with the scooter, the man with the dog, um, some of the people that we're seeing outside of uh, La Poubelle, right? Um, the Lascoid. All right. Um, let me see here. The org closed two minutes ago, so I think I am going to uh, take a lap around back. Um, yeah, the the reason that I keep on asking the officers for their um, badge number and their name is so that based upon the time, I can FOIA the calls that came in um, to see what the what the request was, and eventually I feel like we could say it's an abuse of the 911 system. You know, and I don't, I have no evidence that they came in through 911. Uh, I will tell you that they, they handed the, they wrote down something on a business card and handed it to one of the officers, the, uh, the officer of color that was on the left on the earlier video. They did hand him, again, a handwritten note. I have no idea what the handwritten note was. I definitely don't like that there was a handwritten note uh, in that space. But uh, there it was. So, all right. Uh, the org is closed for the evening. I am going to take a lap around the back. Um, as is tradition, I will try to show you a new area of this uh, of Chicagoland. So, if you want to see some architecture and hear some stories that I may or may not make up about the architecture, stay tuned.
Yeah, that's. This is one of those things where I, I agree that it's a waste of a resource. And Chicago has enough real crimes. Like, Chicago has some problems. Bullets fly in this city. Um, drugs are sold in this city. Uh, people are accosted in this city. We don't need police to be engaged by Scientology for these frivolous call-outs. And um, um, I don't know that this is a policy, but I will tell you that every major city does not want any crimes in their central business or tourist districts um, because it just it's, it quells um, tourism. And in this area, I would much rather they are able to react to tourists that are in trouble than the, the, the cult, right? Uh, it's, it's absolutely ridiculous um, what goes on here. And the idea that they're using tax paid for resources as a tax exempt organization. Uh, again, we're seeing the taller buildings, the Sears Tower, uh, residential building with a little wedge on top. The white building there is residential. This building, residential. Just over this wall is a ComEd substation. Um, I don't know what the building that's going up is, but I would guess that it's residential. Um, yeah, that'd be interesting if you could figure out a way that my wasting the resources allowed for some other crime to occur, and am I liable for that? Uh, this, unfortunately, is a very common site in Chicago, so that's uh, a, a rat hotel, so rats can enter there. Uh, and they actually do come out of there. Usually what those have is a form of poison, and that poison then hopefully is taken back to the nest, where it can be shared by all the recipients in the nest. Uh, again the rear entrance to Scientology. Uh, I will probably be out here somewhere in the 8.30, 9 o'clock hour tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow starts the business week. Uh, I work in the area. I typically come by here first and make sure I can get the shades down and then I go off to the office. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Stop face. You have a thousand of those in your alley. And uh, I'll bet. So you can't see it because it's got a little bit of, looks like bird doo-doo on top of it. But to the left of that door is another one. Uh, there's one between the concrete and the air conditioner in the corner there. Uh, I think, so this is a residential to our left. Uh, probably gonna, oh, if you, uh, this is pretty dark in here, but if you look behind the tire, there's two of them. So this city has often had to deal with uh, rats. I, I just like the goofiness of that uh, mural. <laughs> uh, 
uh, so you were able to get rid of it without having to call in animal expertise? When we started the live, um, I was leaving Union Station and I was giving you a kind of a shot of the old post office. And uh, I'm, as I walk forward here, I am, we're underneath the metro tracks right now, but uh, a block after we get past the metro tracks, we will see both the operating post office as well as the old post office. And the old post office has been converted into office space. Um, office and event space. So they have an awful lot of events there, weddings, um, business parties. I think that uh, Walmart had their 401, uh, 401, their 10K, their quarterly 10K was in there um, about a month ago. Did you hear about <laughs> That's hilarious. So part of me says, okay, was that an experiment by the police <laughs> to, to figure out how much marijuana does a rat need? If you've been on the channel for any amount of time, you realize that I'm a fan of this mural. I've, I've just always loved that. and. Now I so equate it to, oh God, who let those people into our neighborhood? Um, as we go here, this is Well Street and that green space uh, there, uh, it's a dog park. And it's also the excess land of uh, like a, a clover leaf that gets you into the um, underground portion of uh, Franklin and, uh, or Lower Wacker. Lower Wacker is a better way of saying it. So if you wanna get from here to the lakefront, the best thing to do is take Lower Wacker because you get to drive underneath all of the traffic and you can usually get there pretty fast. Um, this is, uh, I don't know if it's Alta Grand or Alta Crossing or Grand Alta, but uh, this is one of the newest residential areas here and just a beautiful mural inside or, or wall, wall painting. Um, and I don't know about you guys, but I, I like this stuff. So. I love drawings and maps. Architectural drawings and maps are the greatest thing in the universe. Um, and as we look forward again, you've got the, uh, the old post office on the right here. And that's actually composed of three different buildings. You've got the uh, the sixth floor building in front with the horizontal windows, that's one building. On the north side of it, or as you're looking at it, the right side of it, that tower is the original building. And then the middle body and the other tower on the south end is a third building. Uh, if you're fans of the Batman movie sequence, um, the Batman interior, so uh, the uh, Gotham Hall was the interior of that, uh, that North Tower. And then this is the operational post office in Chicago. And I'm gonna run across the street real quick. We're going to, uh, this might be, uh, it's, it's Wacker and so, it's sometimes Wacker and sometimes Franklin, it splits right here. So again, 
whacker is going to get you underneath the city. And you can see the... Eh. I, I wish I could zoom out and zoom in quicker in this process, but that'll take you uh, to Lower Wacker so you can get around the city quickly. And then this is just a, a way to get under the Congress Parkway um, so that you can travel down Franklin without having to stop at the expressway. Uh, again, the taller building there in the middle is between the two large buildings on, on the outside is uh, the Chicago Board of Options. And that's, I think it's Ares, A-R-E-S, um, who is the goddess of grain. And some of that might be made up, but I think it's principally true. What else do we have here? More graffiti over there. Um, I'm a runner, and if you're a runner and you want to cheer on a fan in the Chicago Shamrock Shuffle, this is a great place to cheer people on because this is, it's a little bit of a dip and then you've got a hill, and then you're within about a mile and a half of the finish, so this is the time when it's to say, hey, we got to go now. Yeah, if you ever come to Chicago, uh, the number one thing that I think you must do is take uh, an uh, architectural boat tour. Um, hopefully it's a, it's a nice weather day, but um, it's a great way to see the city and see a lot of different architecture. And those docents are incredibly knowledgeable. They have all kinds of interesting history about the buildings, why these buildings exist, what they were originally created for, who the architects were. Um, while the Chicago fire was a great tragedy, the one thing that I'm always thankful for is that the Chicago fire made it so that there was this blank canvas and the city planner said, have at it. There was no no regulation on what style buildings had to be or, or anything of that nature. It was that, you know what, folks, go build stuff. And you had the Mies Van der Rohe's and the Skidmore Owens. They're later, so they're they're 70s, but earlier than that, Monadnock. Um, the, the early mid uh, architects of um, the early 20th century. Yeah. <laughs> Poor Mrs. O'Leary's cow. All right, folks, um, if you could do me a favor, uh, anybody who's still on here, um, if you can comment in the actual YouTube channel, that would be great because those show up as engagement. Uh, and again, just trying to grow the channel so we can increase the audience, let more people know of the, the crimes and sins of our new cultic neighbor here in Chicago. Uh, they've been here for a while, but I'm gonna say that they've, with the firing back of the new executive staff, I feel like there's been a reinvigoration and the cult feels emboldened. They feel that they're on the upswing and I want to dissuade them of all of those types of ideas. We're here to stop you no matter what we can. Okay. I'm going to shut down now. I appreciate everyone being here. Thank you so much. Uh, I know Ellie was in here earlier. Um, whenever Ellie's in, everybody, please say thank you to her. She helps it so that all I have to do is I have to point the camera and talk goofy stuff. Uh, I'll ha Amy, I'll do that. I'll, I'll do that. I know that I do it... Um, when I update the, um, the live, I put hashtags down there. All right. Hi, Fluffer. <laughs> you were very quiet today. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. I'll see you later.
Bye-bye. I'll see you tomorrow morning around 8.30, 9 o'clock.